All right, we may have a winner to replace Canada's aging fleet of CF-18 fighter jets. Everyone has been really divided on what airframe Canada should pick for its next jet fighter. After the Boeing Super Hornet was ruled out late last year, it was down to the Saab Gripen and Lockheed Martin's highly profiled F-35. That is no longer the case as Canada is now entering its final negotiations on purchasing the F-35A Lightning II. However, we've been at this crossroads before. An earlier decision to purchase these jets had originally been planned just over a decade earlier. Only a decade? That's not bad, Canada. Now, I don't want to get you too lubed up in case of any initial disappointment. This announcement does not mean the deal is officially closed. Only that the Canadian government will begin talks to acquire up to 88 of the modern F-35s at its budgeted price of $19 billion. Lockheed Martin was said to have outbid Saab, the other final contender. In what I'm sure will be a painful concession from its opponents, the Liberal government is expected to receive a better deal on the F-35 after their multiple delays opened up an increase of favorable bidding from the competition. Talk about failing upwards. Contract finalization is anticipated by the end of the year, with delivery of the first aircraft scheduled for 2025. That is, if an agreement can be reached and production started in a reasonable time frame. Now take that information and throw it out of your brain. It means nothing. All gone. Surprise, we still have space on the table for another GOAT rodeo. A statement from Canada's procurement minister tells us that the Saab and its Gripen can still sneak back into negotiations if the talks stall with Lockheed Martin. Wow, finally time is working in our favor. That feels nice, doesn't it? Let me hear below how you think this is going to go, and if Canada is making the right decision. First, let me shine a little more light on our decision. Oh, you're already typing. Okay, well, a few of the contentious requirements from the competition were to 1. Meet Canada's intelligence sharing requirements that we use through NORAD to defend North America, and 2. Legally invest into Canada. I'm getting the feeling this ruffled some feathers on the European bidders. Can I tackle my command? Yes, Captain. That is if you feel like it. I mean, I don't have to decide everything. But that's okay with me. I am just fine with getting a little bit back. As for Lockheed, let's not forget how Canada has already contributed 613 million US into the F-35 program. Our contract, our plane, our rules after all. These decisions will now support 150,000 Canadian jobs and contribute tens of billions to the Canadian economy over the fighter's lifespan. And let's face it, we are going to milk that son of a bitch. As for what the final contract will look like, I'm not too sure yet. That $19 billion price tag is expected to be refined a little further. Then there is the issue of maintenance. At this moment, any major overhauls for the airframe would necessitate its return to the US manufacturer. Now that sounds expensive. It sounds like we shouldn't be relying on Big Brother if we also value increased independence. This is definitely a problem to fix by maybe negotiating a Canadian facility into the final agreement. Experts also want to rush order an initial handful of jets into the hands of Canadian pilots in the event that Papa Putin crosses into Poland. Now I wouldn't be abusing your ears with that ridiculously ambitious pillow talk if I didn't see an actual possibility of it happening. The US Air Force has just announced it will buy 15 fewer F-35s. This opens up a ripe opportunity for us to fall into face first. And if nothing else, that would keep this overall theme going. These points aside, it's really hard to argue that the F-35 doesn't look impressive on paper. Canada will be purchasing the F-35A variant, most notably the one without vertical takeoff and landing. Lockheed has been boasting about its fighter's incredible mix of stealth capabilities, advanced sensors, weapons, and improved range. Now the F-35A still needs a runway, but that's probably just fine for Canada. It is also expected to be more agile than those variants crammed with VTOL capabilities. What I really want to see is how the advanced sensor suite pairs with the signature helmet mounted display. This is a system so advanced, so amazingly technical, that I imagine it will rouse pilots while also giving stage 4 depression to their mechanics. The F-35 is also capable of carrying more than 18,000 pounds of ordnance over its operational or combat radius range of 1100 kilometers. However, this brings me to my most contentious point against the F-35, its range. Saab has highlighted how its Gripen E variant would come with large external fuel tanks. 
That would give their airframe a slight edge with a 1300 kilometer combat radius. Now sure, the F-35 can fly as far as 2200 kilometers in a straight line, but let's consider what is going to be one of its main purposes. Those long interception sorties up north to escort wayward Russian bombers off our turf. These range figures don't include real-world variables such as time on station or the general fuckery we might receive from opposing pilots. Yes, the F-35 can slap on a few external tanks of its own, but then why are we paying for its sleek design or those fancy stealth capabilities that would then be invalidated? These are just a few of the questions that Canada's favor towards Lockheed Martin has now opened up for the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter program. Just last year, the US Pentagon had acknowledged a recorded list of 800 unresolved software and hardware deficiencies in their own fleet of F-35s. These issues are expected to be compounded further with serious supply shortages that we are now sure to inherit. Now that's not to say that this issue is exclusive to the F-35 or the particular variant that we want, but this has forced other nations to simply fly their new F-35s much less than intended. A total of 13 other nations have now added an F-35 to their Air Force, and despite the slow progress in development, it has been somewhat pleasant to only just dip our toes into the raging bin fire that has been the F-35 program. His face, blank man, just nothing there. This guy takes out a whole budget. Wife, kids, everyone. Like he's ordered off some pizza. I know if I didn't keep it together, it was my ass. Either jet could make a compelling addition to the Royal Canadian Air Force if implemented correctly. But as for buying some of both, as many of you have suggested, well, tell me honestly below if you really think we can afford to fly and maintain two entirely different airframes. Ultimately, the importance of what airframe we choose is being eroded with every day that passes. Our pilots simply need a replacement, and Canada needs the capability to respond when threats emerge both foreign and domestic. If the final F-35 is delivered as anticipated in 2032, our CF-18s will have been around for 50 years and undergone multiple operational extensions. Let's make sure they get the retirement they deserve. As always, thanks for watching. I'm not an expert on these airframes, so if you are, let me know below if I've missed anything. Worst day in my life, man. Well, I'm sold.